Sure, sure. So if you if you look at you know in insurance distribution, you would realize that that is the biggest headache for uh, any insurer because you know a sizable portion of the revenue goes in uh, you know customer acquisition, and uh, you know the what we have built is basically something that sits between insurance companies and ecosystem partners, right? And our offering enables these ecosystem partners to distribute various kinds of insurance products to their own captive customer base, right? See, at the end of the day, uh, if you are a large organization and if you have a sizable number of customers, uh, you are always looking at, you know, a additional revenue channel, right? And the best way to monetize your customer base is to distribute financial products. And if you look at, uh, you know, uh, the, if you look at the, the slew of financial products that are available, you know, insurance takes the pole position there. And if any insurance, if any ecosystem partner wants to distribute insurance, they need access to a platform, which is a SaaS based API led platform, which will enable them to distribute insurance to their customers. And that's exactly what we okay. do. And as far as products are concerned, we are integrated with all the insurance companies in India and are able to offer, you know, motor insurance products, health insurance products, life insurance products and also a lot of affinity based uh, you know assurance products okay all right you plan to utilize the fresh funds to improve your technology as well as for inorganic growth uh, through mna so jendu what is the kind of watch chest you have today for inorganic growth what companies are on your radar yeah we basically are looking at uh, you know acquisition from two lens okay. one would be uh, one would be some technology company which can come in and and and, and bring in complementary skills, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, if you look at uh, insurance as a sector, there is not much of a technological uh, evolution or technological interventions that uh, that 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 have happened in this particular industry, as opposed to payments or lending or fintech, uh, you know, in general, right? So there is a lot of work that, you know, players like us need to basically deliver so that we build this infrastructure on which distribution uh, can happen automatically, right? So we are building, uh, we are looking at technology companies who can come in and sort of bolster, uh, you know, our might. That's one. And second is we are also looking at, uh, you know, interesting, uh, you know, distribution partners hmm. who can come in and create very bespoke and customized products so that the margin expansion can happen okay. uh, for the organization. So how soon will we hear of an acquisition? Uh, we are looking a couple of quarters from here. Okay. Of quarters from okay. Here. So give me a sense of the business growth numbers. Where does the revenue stand currently? And I believe you're already profitable. Uh, where yes. do you go from here? Yeah, so <clears throat> top line and bottom line, these are the two uh, you know, important metrics of any business. Hmm. And what we have believed is being being an organization who has been around for almost 11 years now, we understood that unless and until you are building a fundamentally solid business, right, uh, you know, it is it is difficult for you to sustain. So uh, today, you know, we uh, last financial year, we closed 350 crores worth of okay. gross return premium okay. uh, and, and the revenue of around 70 crores. Uh, this year we will be target. We are targeting thousand crores of gross return premium and a revenue of around two hundred crores. Sure. Okay. One final question, and if you could quickly answer that, you aim to achieve an annualized gross return premium of five hundred million dollars by March twenty twenty four. What makes you bullish? Where do you see the next leg of growth coming from? In fact, you're eyeing international expansion. If you could also tell us what markets you're looking to expand in and what are the timelines. At least for the next 18 months, we are not looking at international expansion. We are focusing okay. primarily on the Indian markets. Hmm. Uh, but a but lot of our partners with whom we work today, they have global footprint. And, and they are sort of pushing us that if we can customize the solution uh, for, for you know, adoption of this product across certain other geographies that they operate. Uh, and we are looking at Southeast Asia and, and, and uh, you know, the GCC region, which is Middle East, hmm. uh, primarily for that. All right. So, Jendu, we've completely run out of time, but wish you the very best for all your growth plans. And many thanks for joining us on Startup Street. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Baiju's co-founder and director Divya Gokulnath has compared the EdTech giant's FY21 results to the blockbuster release of Brahmastra. 
Taking to LinkedIn, Gokulnath wrote, and I quote, the second blockbuster release of this year after Brahmastra was Baiju's financial results. I have not seen Brahmastra yet, but I do happen to know Baiju's results because as its director, I was involved in its making, end of quote. She also added coverage of the EdTech major's financial results was sensationalized to focus only on the company's losses after it released its audited financials last week. And I quote again, it's easy for... for to." For forget in the flood of negative headlines that we are 18 months post FY21 and that Baiju's has grown more than four times in this span or that our widening losses in FY21 have been cut to half in FY22, end of quote, she added. Gokulath also added that in the LinkedIn post that despite the 125 crore rupees loss they suffered every day in FY21, Baiju's made 27 crores in revenue per day in FY22. Well, on that note, uh, uh, we're going to head into a short break. But coming up next, B Capital recently announced the close of its Ascent Fund 2 at $250 million. A special conversation with Howard Morgan, the chairman and general partner at B Capital, on the company's investment strategies. Stay tuned.